Your stepfather berates you and you say one word back to him and literally you say like Go f oh. What the f oh. Good relic. I have never been touched by my parents. You're drinking water? Today we're gonna make a tier list of every relic in Slade Aspire, okay? Every single one. And I'm going to be rating them as a, a def primarily a defect player, okay? And just how not by like how good they are overall, but more like when I see them, do I care? Do I <laughs> how much how much pre do you find in my boxers after a run when I find this relic? Okay. That's how I'm gonna rank them. That's it. Here's the tier list. Here's everything. The first tier of the day. The first relic of the day. Akabeko. Akabeko. At the beginning at the beginning of every combat, you gain eight vigor. Eight vigor means that your attack is gonna do eight more damage. If it's a multi-hit attack, it's going to deal 8 damage for every hit. It can be a lot of damage. If it hits 3 times, that's gonna be 8, 16, 24 damage. Extra. For, for free. free. Um, so it can be a very good, it can also be very like lackluster. If you get it early in Act 1, it's gonna be fantastic. It is common, I think. A common relic. Or uncommon. I'm not sure. Common, uncommon, I don't really see the difference. Uh, either way, it's, it's pretty neat. It's pretty nifty to get early. If you get it late, it's not very nifty. It's kind of nothing. It's kind of nothing at all. So, uh, definitely B for Aka Beko. It, it just, it's just kind of situational. It, 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 it relies so much on you getting it kind of early to be, to be like meaningful. And it also needs a multi hit to be meaningful. So, I don't really care too much about it. It's good. It's nice, but it's not gonna be like game changing like some of these are. We're doing really tearless again. Yeah, the last time I got too tired to, to finish it, but now we're gonna finish the fucking thing, okay? And I'm going to properly mention what things do before before I, I, I rate them. Anyways, anchor A. Actually, S. Actually, S. 80 90% of enemies in this game attack turn one. This blocks 10 of that every single time. It's pretty good. The bot relics are just fantastic. When I see this, I get very happy because then I can spend turn one using powers, drawing out cards, cycling my deck, doing all kinds of things and not have to worry about blocking. So I can spend my energy elsewhere. Even in the heart fight, it's very nice because on turn one, while the heart is not attacking you, you're still going to take pulse of death damage. If you have a barrier, then you're going to save that barrier because you got anchor. It's nice. I like it. It's not always going to do something, but when it does do something, it's very, very nice. 99% of the time, it's nice. T set. After a bonfire, your next combat, you're gonna have two more energy on the first turn. Situational. Do you have a big starting hand? It's good. But it needs a bonfire. It needs a rest. Now, you are gonna go to a lot of rests throughout the game, depending. I mean, I guess it depends on your pathing, but it's something you have to consider when you get this relic. Me, though? I don't consider it at all. I just go whatever I want. I don't think about, like, oh, I need to go to energy for the next and after bonfire. Let's <laughs> see. It's B. Good for boss fight? Yeah, it's, it's... Against, yeah, against bosses. If you have a energy demanding or big starting hand. That's, it kind of depends, doesn't it? Yeah, when it's good, it's good. But it's not that many cases that it's like super good. And a lot of the time it just doesn't do anything. Well, for most of the fights in the game, it doesn't do anything. For the heart, it doesn't do anything. It's like, it's like mid. It's okay. I don't get mad when I get it, but it's okay. Art of War is a bit better though. Definitely better. Uh, specifically since I play Defect. Defect likes to play a lot of skills. Defect can do a lot of things with energy. Defect can multiply his energy. Defect can draw a lot of cards with his energy. He can kill everything with simply by using skills. So this is basically like a free energy. Uh, in some in some decks. It's just it's overall a very nice relic. Good reliant energy, uh, you know, generator. I like it a lot. Oh, and I, I, of course, what does the relic do? When you don't play attacks, next turn you get one more energy. That's it. If you play as skills, if you play powers, next turn you get energy. If you play an attack, you don't. Uh, it's a Sun 2 box. It's nice. Um, next up we got Astrolabe. It's F. If there was a tier below F, I would put it there. I'm actually gonna do the same thing I did last time. We're gonna put it all the fucking way down here. Because Astrolabe always gives me dog shit. Every time I use it, I get fucking garbage. Okay? I'm gonna give away three strikes and get somehow, somehow, get three upgraded cards that are worse. That are literally just worse. Play fucking Watcher. I use Astrolabe. What do I get? I get three upgraded reflexes. Okay, they, they, they literally do nothing. It's dog shit. I hate it. I, I, it's always, it always scams me. It scams me every time and I get garbage that does not fit with my build. Fuck it. Uh, marbles. Hey. It's good. We just had a run where I drew a three cost, three energy card 
turn one that deals 30 damage to all enemies and it one shot some uh, some uh, hallways for me because I had this relic. They're all vulnerable turn one. I deal 30 damage turn one. That's 45 damage. That's 15 free damage from one relic on every enemy. Um, and even then, you have this this against against uh, Gremlin Noble. It's gonna be big. If you do a lot of damage, if you do direct damage, it's big. Generally, you're gonna do a lot of direct damage. Um, it's just it's just better opening. And since most of the, the fights in this game are, are DPS checks, I would say every fight in the entire game is some sort of variation of a DPS check. Being able to do 50% more damage on one of the turns for free, it's pretty fucking good. I like it a lot. Um, Bag of Prep is one of my favorite relics of the entire game. Recently I've started to value deck cycling. Just cycling the deck. Uh, this draws two cards for you in the beginning for free. Getting things into play early. And just cycling your deck faster so you can play those good cards more often. You know, it's just it's just free card draw on the first turn. Very good. It lets you afford having, for example, backstab on, on, uh, on the Watcher. It lets you afford... Well, she already has a snake relic, but whatever. It lets you have uh, allowed to, You can maybe allow yourself to have a boot sequence on, on defect if you want. Like, innate cards become uh, more excusable with this thing in, in hand. No, a bag, bag, bag of prep is just like an amazing card. Having a, having a good starting hand is, um, is incredible. Especially since a lot of the... For example, T-Set. If you have bag of prep, T-Set is very good because now... Well, you have two more energy and you actually have something to spend the two energy on with the bag of prep. You have to draw two more cards, that's two more energy. It's perfect. Um... Yeah, always good. Uh, Bird-faced urn. Low B. The B gatekeeper. It's fine. I just don't care for it too much. I will say though, most of the time when I have this, I didn't. I think it's... Uh, I, th I, I don't even notice that I have it. If it did three instead of two, it would maybe be like a bit higher than B. It would be like here. <laughs> two health is nice. And you, and you do get it for free. You were gonna, you were gonna play that power anyways. What does it do? All right. Bird-faced urn. Whenever you play a power, you gain two health for free. You just get two health. You play defect, you play a lot of powers, you get a lot of health. It's nice. But it's only two health. Over over the course of a run, I'm guessing like you play maybe a couple of powers per fight. It's gonna amount to a lot of health. In the end, it's gonna amount to a big number. If you buy it in the shop, it's gonna cost you like 300 coins. And when you find a rare relic, would you wouldn't you rather have another rare relic? Isn't there something different you would probably you would want? It's B. I would say it's B. Healing is nice. Having a source of healing is very nice, especially when it's so free. But yeah. Black blood. Whenever you finish a combat, heal 12. It's the boss swap for the um, Ironclad. He has a relic starting that heals 6. This heals 12. It's twice as much. Get it at the start of Act 2. Maybe it can be good. He has a lot of self-harm. Sure, it's good. But... But I don't think it's good. I think it's like D. I think it's down here. I just don't think you need to heal 12 for every fight. When you already heal 6, I don't think you need to heal 6 more. It's just too much of one thing. You would rather have the Black Star, for example. There's just, there, there are just better boss relics. If you are presented in Act 2 with the Ectoplasm and the fucking uh, uh, Fusion Hammer, and you have no way to, to upgrade things other than the bonfires, yeah, maybe you take this. Because it's just, well, it's... It, it doesn't have any detrimental downside, and it does something good. So surely you just take this then. But, yeah, it, it would be like the very last option. Um, Black Star? If you get it at your, as your boss swap, it's S. If you don't, it's A in Act 2. If you get it at the end of Act 2, I would say it's like C. Or maybe, maybe B. This one depends a lot when you get it. It depends so much when you get it. Like, is this gonna be worth? I don't know. If you if you boss up it immediately and draw some like nice damage cards in Act One, it's fucking giga s. Um, we we put it in the middle. I would say it's a. It's it's okay. Here's the thing. Blood vial. Is blood vial C? Is blood vial? I would say it's worse than the head. I would say it's worse than the head. What does the star? Oh, what does the star do? The star. Whenever you kill an elite, it drops two relic instead of one. That's what it does. The star gives you two relics instead of one. It's uh, if you get it in the beginning, you get more value of it. If you get it at the end of Act One, you get some, you get good value of it. If you get it at the end of Act Two, you only have one more active elite and the one elite in the final act to get relics from. So it's like it will probably amount to three, two or three or maybe four relics if you get it at the end of Act Two. If you get it at the end of Act One, it's gonna be like. 
six, seven relics. If you get it in the very beginning, it's gonna be a lot of fucking relics. A fucking lot. But getting those relics is gonna be difficult, because if you play Defect and you get this as your boss swap, well, you're gonna have damage issues, because your Cracked Core is gone. Um, but it's like, it's if you do manage to do it, it's very good. This heals two at the start of- Blood Vial heals two at the start of every fight. Two health, for free, at the start of every fight. It's nice, but it's also kinda shit. <laughs> it's just- <laughs> it just doesn't do much. It helps. There is an event in Act 2. This, if you get it in Act 1, there's an event in Act 2 that will make it so that you can swap this thing for for bites instead of strikes. And the bites is, is like an attack card that heals you two for each time you play it. Here's the thing. That event is to remove five, all your strikes and receive five bites. If you have removed strikes, you're gonna have... You, you, let's say you trade in three strikes, you're not gonna get three bites. You're gonna lose three strikes and get five bites. Now you have two more cards that aren't very desirable. Um, but it's it's like a decent sustain. I wouldn't say it's bad because it doesn't do anything. Like it's just it's just a nice heal, I guess. If you get it early, it's gonna amount to like a lot of health. So yeah, this thing is like s. I forgot the actual number, but it heals more than two. It's like five or like six or seven or something. Every time you gain gold, you gain health. Four health. It's only four. Surely it's more than four. This is the blood idol. You need to have, I think it's five. Yeah, so five health every combat, basically. It's a very good relic. It's, it's yeah, it's basically twice as good as the vial, and, and then some. Um, and you just get it by, and there's, there's events you can get money. There's, you know, if you have ceramic fish, you get health every time you get a card. Like, it's pretty fucking good. It also works with Hannah Green, yeah. Like, this is better, because it's like, at the end of every combat, you do get money. There's other ways to get money with Ceramic Fish and, uh, you know, Hand of Greed and stuff like that. Um, fantastic relic. It's just good to sustain. But you do need to get the uh, uh, idol in Act 1 and then trade it in in Act 2 if you get... So it's kind of rare to get, but when you do get it, it's, like, super nice. Um, if this motherfucker just ruined almost my my uh, run of uh, Hermit because the Hermit starts with a as a starting relic where it starts with the curse. Normally you can play that curse because it's playable, but if you have blue candle, it exhausts the fucking thing, which you don't want. So it <laughs> it ruins that. Um, but in in vanilla uh, without mods, this is a this is a relic. It lets you play curses. When you play them, you lose one health and you exhaust the curse forever. Um, the issue is that if you draw a curse, you still drew the curse, and it still fucked up one draw of your deck, and it still is a clog. It's just that you won't draw it again, and whatever negative effect you get from the curse, let's say you draw a normality, you can exhaust the normality, and the normality doesn't actually do what normality does. Um, it still fucked your draw up, but at least you don't get restricted to three cards. So it it can be a nice cope. Let's say you let's say you are in Act Three. And you do the event where you get nine, 1,000 gold and, and two normalities. That is not going to be as detrimental if you have a blue candle. But it's a very niche situation. Because usually then I would just do the uh, fight a boss from Act 1 and get a rare relic. I, I generally just do that, you know. Unless I have like fucking membership card and and, uh, and courier, you know. I, I can I can definitely do without this relic. I think it's F. In in, in like 99% of the cases, you don't need this shit. I would rather, yeah. When I see this thing, I would rather, I get upset. I would rather see something else there. I, when I see this, this... PNG on my screen, I get I get like physically upset. I would just not have it be there. Same with this thing. It's just it's just not good. This thing has some use. For example, against the uh, the the green ghost elite in Act Three, I forgot the name of it. It becomes intangible, which means you can only do one damage to it. If you have a multi hit, it will be five instead of one. Um, the boot means that whenever you do damage, the least the the smallest amount of damage you can do is is five. Instead of one, it's five. Even when an enemy is... I think if the heart has reached his 200 limit of invincible, you can still deal five damage with the boot. I think. Uh, but I'm not sure. So it's like, it does have some very niche uses, but for the most part, it's not gonna be useful. It's just, generally, you tend to do more than five damage. So in the most cases, it's kind of useless. But let's say it meant it could bail you out against Nemesis, the, the ghost, because he becomes intangible. Intangible means you can only do one damage. Let's say he has 15 health, and you have the boot, and he's about to fucking kill you with like 50 damage. And then, well, I have three strikes, so five, 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 and now you beat the fight. Okay. Or maybe that, maybe the reason you killed him was because you did that earlier. Like, it, it, against against intangible, against stuff like that, it's... Yeah. And it can allow you to kill heart turn one. I mean, I know it's, it's possible, but since you can go through invulnerable, in, 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 invincible. Uh, bottle Flame. Generally, you don't want an attack to be what you play in the beginning of fights. Generally, you want to set up skills 
and set up powers, and then in later in the fight you do attacks. Uh, starting off with an attack is generally detrimental to your, your build, unless you're in a very special situation. For example, when I'm playing Hermit and I have round, Roundhouse Kick, which stuns enemies, it can be nice. If when I'm playing Hermit and I have a Quick Draw, it allows me to draw to draw three cards. Then, if that's my first attack that I start with, then it's a, it's a it's a it's a plus draw. It's just it's nice. It's just a faster cycle. Um, I forgot to again explain what this relic does. You select an when you pick a bottle flame, you bottle an attack. That attack will always be innate, meaning you draw a turn one always. Uh, you just don't want to start with attacks for the most part, um, unless that card is something that draws cards, which attacks generally don't tend to do, but some do. Uh, Iron Cloud with Whirlwind could be good, yeah. If you have the mute against from the event, that's, that gives you 3 strength turn 1, then bottling a whirlwind could be very good. Also combined with uh, with marbles, yeah sure, I can see it. But everything for the most part is like high, I think it's like high F. Because for the most part, when you find this relic, you skip it. You literally just don't take it, because you don't want to start with uh, with attacks. So I, 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 for me, I never take it. I almost never take it. I took it today because I had a, a attack that drew cards. That, that's the only thing. Bottle Lightning! Top of A. Top of A. When it's good, it's fantastic. You have a Seek, just bottle the Seek. You have a Pathesis, bottle the Apothesis. It's the same as it's the same as Bottled Flame. You bottle a skill instead of a attack. So you, f f you make a skill innate. It's great. I like how you skip the letter E in your tier lists. I did not make this tier list. This was something someone else made, and they skipped E. I just found this on the internet, okay? I did not make this shit. Anyways, innate skills are good. Apothesis is something you want to play early. Seek is something you want to play early, because it's just plus draw. Aggregate, you know, it's just skills are generally very nice for setting up things. So, uh, you know, A. A. S. This is bottles of power. You bottle a power. Powers are things you want to have in play from the from the very beginning if you can. So having a power be innate that isn't innate, super good, super fucking good. Love it. Now uh, your, your power you you use this on a corruption. It's it's super powerful. You use this on a on a echo form. You use this on a you know whatever like power. It, the, you want them in the power. You want them in play. You want them in play. This lets you you know pick it up uh, and and play it immediately. Unless you have no powers, there's always a use for this relic. Yeah, so like, yeah, as long as you have any powers whatsoever. It, it's only if you get this early in Act 1, you want to kill yourself. Because like, this relic would be so good if it just came a little bit later. Same with like, lightning. Like, if it just came a bit later, it would be fantastic. But if you get it too early, then it's just like, terrible. Yeah, no, the, 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 bottle, the bottle storm is just usually amazing. Brimstone, ironclad specific relic. Every turn, you gain two strength for free. Except... The enemy also gains one strength, so you scale faster. But if you don't finish the fight fast, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna fucking hurt. You're gonna hurt. Um, keep in mind that the 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 the, the heart, the final boss of the game, has a twelve times attack. So every turn you're gonna boost that by roughly twenty four damage. It's pretty rough. You're gonna have to you know that's that's gonna be harsh. But the content, the content from this thing is very good. And when you see it, I generally get it because it's funny. It's just funny. I'll put it in like high. Yeah, like here, there. Yeah. When I, when I see that, I generally buy it. It's just, it's just funny. Bronze scales, S for scales this time, S tier. No, it's just things, when, th when things attack you, you deal three damage for free. Things in this game tend to attack you. They tend sometimes to even attack you a lot. Meaning you like, again, every time the heart does the 12 times attack, okay? It's gonna deal 12 times 3. That is 36 damage. For free. Yeah, scales is just like, it, it, when something hits you, you deal damage back. It's, it's something that can, that can, like, somewhat carry your DPS against the heart. It's just very good. It's, it's very nice. Against the birds, it just, like, molests them. Against the uh, hexagos, it also helps a lot. It's just, it's just, it, no matter where you are in the game, bronze scales are very much appreciated. They're just fantastic. I love them. It's free damage. I like it. Book of Stabbing. This carries. Um, Burning Blood. A. I think I think usually the, 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 the class relics, the starting relics, are, are just A by default because they're really good. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're very nice. This heals 6 after every fight. It's a very good sustain. It's like casting self-repair every fight for free. I, I like it. I, I, I really do. That's good. Cracked Crown. It really depends. 
generally bad. Having no card choices is generally not good. If your deck is already developed, why not? Why not? It's, it's, it's free energy. If your deck isn't developed, it's terrible. It will ruin your run. It's only something you better take. Yeah, but usually you only take this at the end of Act 2. At the end of Act 1, it's terrible. As a swap relic, it's absolutely terrible. So I'm gonna give it a C for Cracked. It's just, it's sometimes it's good, but usually it's not good. Crack Crown gives you, is a boss relic that gives you one more energy, one more base energy. So if you have three base energy, now you got four. Nice. But you get two less card choices for every combat, meaning you're, you're, you're gonna be really terrible at developing your deck. You get one cho card choice every fight, it's like, it's not good. There, it's better than Blood Vile though. Um, S. Gold play the cables. Gold play the cables. After. At the end of your combat, your rightmost orb triggers one additional time. It's just free orb trigger. If you have focus, it's very good. If you have dark, it's incredible. No matter what you have, really, it's just really good. Um, I got a I got a per per perfect lethal on Gremlin Knob today and saved myself from taking 27 damage because I had this relic. Literally just because of it. It's really good. It's good if you pick a question card. You could say that, or you could say that if you have a question card, then that's the reason not to take Crack Crown, because you want to just have as many options as possible. So you could say that the opposite is true too. Um, I would say, yeah, the latter. This is a defect relic, yeah, because it's the only one who has orbs. Um, but yeah, it's S tier. It just, it just evokes or uh, triggers your, uh, your orbs for free. Aren't all defect items really good? Yeah, most of them. I think there's one bad defect relic. Uh, there's one that's shit, isn't it? I, I, I swear there's one that's not good. Yeah, this is the only one that's bad for a defect. Frozen core. It sucks. We'll get to that though. Calipers, S tier. Every instead of losing all block at the end of your turn, you lose 15. Maintaining block is broken. If you can overblock, it's 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 just fantastic. I play defect a lot. Defect is a character that can generate block out the fucking ass. He has genetic algorithm, which can block for like 70 or 80 in the late game, maybe 90 if you if you echo form it. Or if you have strange boon. He has reinforced body, which can block for a lot. He is he even has fro frost orbs. Orb slots, frost orbs, focus. You can block for like 80 a turn. If you can maintain that block too, between turns. Yeah. It's on defect, it's incredible. On someone like Ironclad, it's not so good because, well, you you can just get barricade. Um, on, uh, I guess I guess also on, on uh, Silent, it can be good. Like maybe a little bit. But I would say it's the worst probably on um, on Watcher. Watcher doesn't really give a shit. She, she, but she just, she just, she, just I, she generally does not overblock, so yeah. Ding, ding. This is a boss relic. You get a unremovable curse that is uh, just simply unplayable. Uh, and you also get one relic of each tier. So you get a uh, common, uncommon, and rare relic. And a curse that you cannot remove. If you have a good card draw, or if you're playing the hermit, which benefits from curses, it's very good. It's a good way to just get some instant power. You don't know what the, what the relics are going to be until you, like, take it, but... It's nice. I would say it's like it's like B or A, probably A. Low A, ding ding. Ding ding can give you shit like shovel. Yeah, it can give you it can give you garbage. To be fair. Anyways, turn three, block eighteen. It's the anchor, but turn three. It's gonna be there. They are they do the same thing, but on different times and different amounts. But uh, they are equally good. There's certain enemies in this game that do a lot on turn three. Against the heart, it's very good. Against uh, Reptomancer, I think. I think Reptomancer turn three is when she does a lot of garbage, right? Yeah, turn three Reptomancer, you definitely want to have this. Um, but yeah, like a lot of enemies attack you on turn three. Repto is kind of random. She will always summon on turn one, always. I think. But it's turn it's it, turn three, you get 18 block, which is just this is nice. It's free block. It's S it's S tier. I like having it. It's fantastic. Um, yeah, that's good. Potion or b b b pot, cooking pot. This is a shop relic only. You buy it in a shop. It costs too much. It gives too little. It it it's F. It's low F. I've never ever bought this thing. In Ascension 20, you have two potion slots. This thing brews you five potions. Unless you have potion bark and potion belt, I would never take this fucking thing. And even then, I don't know. Like it's just not worth. It's just just it doesn't do anything. It sucks. It's totally garbage. Since you can only like you don't get the full benefit of it. Um, it sucks. Five potions, two slots. <laughs> it's just, uh, why? why? Why in the world would you do that? Centennial puzzle. The first time each combat that you take damage, be it through pulse of death or self-damage or enemy damage, 
you draw three more cards for free. It's just more draw. It's just faster cycle. I like it a lot. I'm gonna put it up here. It's fantastic. I like it. It's just, it's just, it draws cards for you. Solid A, 100%. It's just very nice. Always good to have, never bad to have. Yeah, there's not a single, there's not a single one with whether this is bad. Next up, we have Ceramic Fish. Ceramic Fish gives you nine gold whenever you get a card. CD? It depends. It has some funny synergies where like if you have Ceramic Fish and Bloody Idol. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah, you, it, you get a lot of health then. For the most part, you don't notice this thing. But it does have some synergies and it's just nice. It's just nice money if you get it early. I think, yeah. Honestly, D, like Ceramic Fish. It's gonna be Ceramic Fish, yeah. I don't think C. It has to be a bit lower because, like, in more in ninety-nine percent of the cases, it's not gonna it's not gonna do much. But there are some cases definitely where it is good. Just because it's D doesn't mean it's useless. It does have its uses, but for the most part, it it it's not relevant at all. Uh, Champion's Belt is a relic that's only ironclad, I think. Um, except unless you're playing Downfall, in which case you can get it in other characters too. But only on ironclad for the most part. And whenever you apply Vulnerable, you also apply Weak. S. Yes. I'm pretty sure that's gonna be an S for me. Because you get to do something offensive and also make it, give it a defensive. Like you have your offense, it's like your bash becomes a uppercut. Whenever, or, or like your, your, or your thunderclap becomes a, a gigantic weaken. Uh, it's just free debuff, it's really good. Especially if you play downfall and you can do, get the event to have some other characters, it's just fantastic. I love it. Not like super high S, but applying weak and vulnerable is very good. Your moral blade becomes even stronger, true, true. This is... A Ash, that whenever you exhaust a card, I believe it does 3 damage to all enemies, or 2 damage. Is it 3 or 2 damage to all enemies? 3? Yeah, so whenever you exhaust a card, which you tend to do a lot of on Ironclad, you do 3 damage to all enemies. Just 3 damage. Uh, S. It's up here. It's up here. I'm not too excited about these. This, they're gonna be low S because I don't play Ironclad. I just don't play them, so I, I, just, I don't care about them. But they, I, I recognize that they are very good. They're very, they're very free damage. I mean, you have cards like, for example, Second Wind, which will exhaust all of the non-attacks in cards in your hand. You do that, you get a bunch of armor, and for every card you exhaust, which is probably going to be like five or six, you deal three damage. It's just... It's ridiculous. To all enemies? Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. Anyways. Um, Chemical X. Whenever you use a X cost card, add plus two. It is amazing if you have X cards. If you don't have X cards, it does nothing. Um... I will give it like a solid chemical B. It's gonna be a chemical B for me. It's funny. It's a funny relic. It's a relic that feels good to have. Sometimes I buy this relic without having X cards because I know that if I do get an X card, it's gonna be epic. Based chemical, yeah, chemical based. I think it's good. I like it, but it's not something that's like always gonna be good. Anyways, I don't know the name of this relic. I know that it's watcher specific. That's already an L. Unless you're playing Downfall, which you can get it through an event. It gains gain one block for every card in your hand at the end of your turn. Cloak Grasp. Cloak Clasp. So if you have 10 cards in your hand, you get 10 block. That is also the most you can get, because your your hand limit is 10. It's it, it's probably gonna be, be like 3 block. It's just free block. It's very nice. I had it once on Watcher. I had it once on, on, on actually Silent. It was very nice. I liked it. I think it's gonna be like high B. Okay, high here, like here. It's just free block, man. It's, it's B. Uh, Clockwork Souvenir. As a defect player? S. Against heart, you will never be vulnerable. If you have a uh, bias recognition, it's free. It's it's just good. It's it's just very nice. Against the, if you, Even if you get this thing early, you don't get vulnerable against Gremlin Knob. That's, that's pretty fucking good. Um, artifact is very nice. In Act 2, there's Chosen who will hex you. With this, you don't get hexed. Um, with this, you don't get frailed by the avocado. Uh, it's just super nice. I like it a lot. Uh, Coffee Dripper is the best energy relic in the game. It's gonna go up here. Like here. There it is. S tier. Easy S. It's just fantastic. You can't- you can't rest with bonfires? Sure, but there's a million more ways to get health. I don't care, you know? You have self-repair. You have relics like Eternal Feather. You have relics like, uh, where was it? This. You have relics like this. You have relics like, uh, the, the head. You got fucking, I think there's even more. There's like so, uh, uh, spoon, <laughs> spoon, uh, no, that's not, not those, but there are more, right? There's meal tickets, you know, there's meat in the bone, there's fucking, uh, uh, least waffle. The best solution is to just not take the fucking damage. Spend some energy on some block and just you'll be fine, man. But yeah, it's like, it's the best energy relic in the game, though, no doubt. Uh, cracked core is actually like, fucking sick. It's fucking sick, dude. This thing destroys act one. 
This, this, this cracked core here just fucks Act 1. You don't miss it until it's gone, for real. You really don't. Uh, it's just like, free 3 damage every turn. It, it, if, if you draw dual cast before sap, you can dual, always dual cast something. Against the leases, you know the, the little worms, furry worms that have like, uh, uh, when you hit them they get armor. You can dual cast and it will always one shot if it hits the same one twice. Like it's just, a lot. A lo this solves a lot of Act 1 problems for you. It's just good. It's nice. I like it. Next up, cr Cursed Key. Cursed Key, gain one energy, one base energy. Whenever you open a chest, you get a curse. If you get it at the end of Act 2, it's very much takeable. Even if you get it at the end of Act 1, it's also takeable. Um, it means that if you haven't gotten the Sapphire Key yet, you're gonna have to get a curse. But it's the, at the end of the world. You can also tell about the sprite of the chest you're opening if it's gonna be worth it. Uh, different chests have different types of relics, or like have a higher chance of being like rare, for example. There's a certain look of a chest in Inspire where you can tell like, is this probably gonna be a common, or is it probably gonna be a rare, or is it probably gonna be a, like uncommon. Um, so you, you, you can make some informed choices, even if you have the key. You might also not need relics for your build. Yeah, there you like, there's like, if you, for example, if you, like last, last run I had Black Star, which means I have, I get a lot of relics by elites, so I don't need to open chests, unless I wanna get the Sapphire Key, which I do. Uh, that would be one curse. Um, so I just got the curse key, and then it was fine. Um, I would say it's like, High B or low low A maybe low A. It's it's a very takeable relic. It's a it's a very takeable energy relic. It solves a lot of problems and it it just um. Eh, I like it. I like it. Damuri Damura. I don't play Watcher too much, but I know this thing gives you one mantra per turn. When you get ten mantra, you enter divinity. When you enter divinity, you get three energy and you deal triple damage or two energy. I forgot. Eh, it's like B. Lobby. Yeah, this is okay. It, it's one mantra per turn. It takes ten turns to build up completely. But if you have additional mantra cards, sure, it's okay. I can, I can, I can get behind it. But for the most part, it's gonna be. For the most part, it's not gonna do much unless the fight lasts way too long. Darkstone Periap. Whenever you add the curse to your deck, deck add six max health. I think it's six. I don't think it's eight. I think it's six. It can also be bad. Yeah, you, with this you might enter enter divinity on the wrong turn. So it's it can be not good. But for the most part, it's nice. Um, whenever you have the curse, add six max health. Okay, these two are like the same. Whenever you, whenever you draw, you get any of these as your relics, I get just like equally upset. Honestly, I would rather, yeah, I would rather the boot than these two, for the most part. It's six, yeah, I, it's just six max health for a curse. Like, when would you want to add a curse, anyways? Like, when would you want that? I don't think you would. Terrible. Uh, next up, we have focus disc. S. It's here with this. These two are, I, I think almost this is better. I think this is better, yeah, focus disc. If you get focus disc early in the game, on defect, you, you basically have a free act one. It makes frost incredibly powerful. It makes, uh, like, everything just becomes, it's just super good. Free focus, imagine not ever not taking, they, like, it's just, when you get this, you, you, you're, you're a very happy man. You're a very happy man or woman, or, or, or your defect. It's, it's fantastic. I always, I'm happy to see this. No matter, no matter how much focus I have, you can never have too much. And having one more is just great. Fuck it. Awesome relic. Uh, dead branch is content. It's a relic I always take. I would never not take a dead branch. I'll give it like I would rather have focus, but this is funny. Dead branch on the on on ironclad is hilarious. Dead branch with corruption on ironclad is is just actually hilarious. I love it. Whenever whatever this does this what this does is whenever you uh, exhaust a card, add a random card into your. Uh, deck. You exhaust the card, you get another random. So like, for, on on on, the, on, uh, on Ironclad, you get the uh, Corruption. And Corruption means that every skill in your your entire deck now costs zero. And when you play it, you exhaust it. So you you play a million skills for zero, and whenever you exhaust, you play them, it goes away, you get another random card. That could be anything. So you, with, with, with that branch, it just makes your fucking entire deck go haywire. And uh, it, it, it can result in some funny things. I've won a lot of runs in uh, A20 because of this, or yeah, yeah, with, with Ironclad. It's it's fun. It's a fun card. And into your hand, most importantly. It does not add it to your discard pile, it's not added to your draw pile. It adds the new random card right into your hand, and you can play it just like that. If you have a corruption on and you, draw, and you generate another skill, you just you, you, you ex play a skill, exhaust it, it becomes another skill, you play it and exhaust it, it becomes something else, and you can just like play the same card. Like fucking slot machine, you sit there like... Play, 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 and eventually it, it, you win the fight and it's over. Like it's, 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 it's funny. It's funny. I've seen those like boomers in the slot machines. Hold up, can I find that? This. <laughs> this is what playing Dead Branch and Corruption is like. 
You just sit there like this. Play the card. Play, 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 play. <laughs> like that. That's that's all you do. This is what is yeah, this is a tactical card game by the way. A lot of strategy involved. You just sit like this. That's why I like corruption. And that branch. Okay. Wait, where's my fucking deck? That's why that branch is good. Because you can just sit there like this. And then you win against Heart. You literally beat the most difficult, most like deck challenging boss in the entire game. And then you're doing something like, yeah, I'm gonna play the skill again. Oh, I got seeing red though. Let's play some more. And then you win the game. It's just, it's, it's funny. I like it. I think it's great. Oh, you, you didn't add any scaling to your deck by the time you get to Heart because you're a fucking monkey? Okay. How about you just exhaust your defend and get a demon form? Okay, I guess you solve the scaling problem. There you go. It's a good relic. Dolly's mirror. And when it's good, it's good. For the most part, you just skip that shit, though. It's a shop relic. You that can only buy this. Dead fun. Yes. That's true. Thank you for the bits. Um, it's a relic you have to buy. Whenever you, you get the Dolly's mirror, you've paid money for it. Okay? Keep that in mind. It's shop relic. It duplicates a card in your deck. Choose a card in your deck, duplicate it. If you have a bias and ignition upgraded, you get two of it now. If you get a, if you if you do have one really good card, you can get two really good cards. It's pretty cheap. It's pretty cheap. But since you need to have something good already to to do that, I would say I would say B tier. It's just that it, it it needs it has a very it's it's good, but it has a very big butt attached to it. Not to be confused with a big gigantic asshole. But I said like the word but. Um, this is F. It, fit, it has the same color as the F, so it goes in F. It's garbage. Whenever you rest, you get a card reward. Fuck it, I don't rest. I don't sleep. I don't I don't sleep, I fucking smith. I hit the gym. I sit there, dink, dink, dink on my fucking cards. We never sleep. Fuck this thing. Awful. Dog shit. Um, do you do doll. For every curse in your deck, gain one strength. Um, on ascension 20 and up, or ascension 10 and up, you are always going to have the fucking, uh, Ascender's Bane, which exhausts, by the way, it's ethereal. So at the very least, this is going to be one strength, which is basically, well, it's a Varia. It is, it is this thing, but it can be more. If you have a, if you have Necronomicon, or if you have Ding Ding, then this is three strength. Okay, now it's starting to get pretty good. I would give it like a low A. It's, it's, for the most part, it's three strength. If you get this on, on the, if you get this fucking thing on the, uh, the Hermit, Tabian. Very good. But at the very at the very least, it's it's one strength. It's a rare relic though. Is it rare? Well it's still it's one strength and it can be more. I think it's okay. Maybe not maybe like high B. If it's rare, yeah, if it's rare then it's I guess it's high B. It's one strength, but like uh, yeah. Anyways. Ectoplasm. This also the no, actually You cannot get ectoplasm at the end of Act 2. Ectoplasm is a weird relic where you can only get it as a boss swap. As, uh, or like a boss swap in the beginning, or Act 1. You can't get this actually in Act 2. Meaning, it's D. You gain one energy, permanently. So you, you have one more base energy. But you cannot get money. F. Yeah, it, it actually looks like F tier is gonna be here. I have never taken this relic in my entire life. Money is so fucking good in Slade Spire. I would never take this relic. It's terrible. If you do end up getting a boss swap into this, you lost the run. Restart. Abandon. Do something else. Go outside. Touch grass. Find a girlfriend. Have children. Marry. Live a long and happy life. Don't pick fucking ectoplasm. Next up, we have emotion ship. Emotion ship, every time you take damage, at the start of the next turn, trigger the passive of all of your orbs. All of your orbs. S. If you're against heart, okay, you got like uh, 15 orb slots, you got like a million focus, the, the heart... Just tickles your little, little, little toe a little bit. Just tickle it a little bit. Back with like lightning. Dark. Frost. And and it's just fucking haywire. It's like it's like when you your stepfather berates you and you say one word back to him and literally you say like you have to show some attitude back to your stepfather and your stepfather just go fucking what the fuck. That's what the motion ship does. If someone just touches you, they, they fucking get deleted, okay? That's the that's motion ship. That's why a motion ship is us here. Good relic. I've never been touched by my parents. Empty cage. It's a boss relic. That's the important thing. This is a boss relic. You need to kill a boss to get it. And you have, to, you have choice between other boss relics. It's to remove two cards. Removing cards is great. 
I like having a thin dick, so... Uh, it's a boss relic, I mean, it's... High B? Low A? It's up here somewhere, but the card removals are great. Sometimes card removals is exactly what you need. Yeah, I like card removals. And Shidron? A. S. Yeah, it's an S. It's S. It should only say, you need to read the book in Act 2, an event in Act 2. There's a book you can read, and you either get Nidoris Codex, Necronomicon, or Enchilron, whatever it is. Um, this book makes it so that every combat, you start with a power that costs zero. The power is random, as if you used white noise. You basically use white noise on turn one every combat. <clears throat> it's good. Powers are amazing. Getting him on in, in, for free turn one is amazing. As an addition to your starting draw, it's very, very good. Um, fantastic card. It's kind of random. And Kyridian. And children. And children. That's it. Children. I like, I love and children. <laughs> Ab absolutely. And children. It's good. Eternal Feather. For every five cards in your deck, heal three when you enter a rest site. I think this is like S. High S. Because... Then I don't have to rest, ever. When I, whenever I get healed, I can- I can- I don't feel bad. I don't feel greedy. When I just smith everything on 10 health. Okay? I think it's good. I think this is a, is a fantastic relic. If you have 15 cards, you heal 9. It's not that much. But it's it it uh, it's it's just it's just nice, it's free. Uh, very good if you have coffee dripper, good synergy. So I like it. Yeah, it's just it's just nice to have. Uh, this is a event relic you get when you pick a good face or bad face. If you get this early, it's very good. Um, whenever you finish a combat, you gain one max health. So you'll probably end up having like twenty more max health at the end of the run. Something like that, which is very good. It's very good. Max health means that your rest skills more after bosses. You heal more. Um, you're less likely to die. It's just free max health. It's, it's a good. Um, <sighs> kind of depends on when you get it though. Uh, it could be as low as like 10 max health. And... Uh, I'll give it like an A. I don't know what the name of it is, but I'll give it an A. Fossil Helix. Rare Relic S. At the start of each combat, you start with one barrier. Your first instance of damage is gone. Deleted. Honestly, I think it's better than the... Is it better than Feather? No, it's kind of it's kind of situational, but it, it it prevents a lot of fucking damage. Definitely yes, it's super good. Um, it can prevent a lot of stuff from fucking you over. Frozen core. I have taken this one time one time in my entire life. It's garbage. It's the one bad and relic for for a defect. Only defect can get this, and it's a boss swap. So first of all, you lose your cracked core. This goes away. You no longer channel. Um, you know, lightning, at the start of the combat. Instead, if you end your turn with an open orb slot, this will generate one frost in that orb slot. If you have some, like, you only generate one frost per turn. It's just not, like, maybe if you have runic capacitor, meaning you start with, like, six orb slots, and then you have, like, a blizzard in your deck. Yeah, okay, I can see it. I can see it, yeah. But it's very, very situational. And it's also something you take in place of getting potentially a, a like, a energy relic, or a, a two card removals, or you know, uh, inserter or something like that. Like, it's just, there's just so much more better relics. If this was not a boss relic, I could kind of see it, but it's a boss relic, so. Uh, frozen, frozen egg, a, like a mid a, like here. Every, whenever you add a, every power card you add to your deck after finding this is going to be upgraded for free. A lot of powers become cracked when they're upgraded. It's good. Really depends on when you, when you get it though. If you get this early in your run, every power is going to be upgraded. It's going to be huge. Because uh, in, in Act 2, you have a chance to find upgraded cards anyways. In Act 3, you have a higher chance to find upgraded cards anyways. In Act 1, every card you find is going to be unupgraded. So, Egg in Act 1, very good. Because the powers you do find are going to be upgraded and they're going to be great. Um, so, it, it kind of depends. Yes, it's okay. Uh, cosmetic Frozen Eye. When you view your drawing pile, your drawing pile will be shown in the order you will draw it. It's S. I recognize that it's S. But for the most part, I don't remember that I have it. And I fucking forget, and, and it's nothing. And it's like a cosmetic relic for the rest of the game. Um, only when I play like a super long run of defect where I have to think a lot, and I can consider things. Like, there's a lot of times where I'm like, I'm going to do something now, and if I had Frozen Eye, 
it wouldn't have to be a gamble and I could know what my like it's just it's a very good relic it's super powerful except you forget you have it a lot of the time like it's <laughs> I don't know. It's it's just knowing what you're going to draw in a card game is always going to be incredibly strong. And if you know how to take advantage of that, which I a lot of the time don't, but sometimes do, then it's very good. Uh, anyways, Fusion Hammer. Gain one energy. You can no longer upgrade at bonfires. Very much takeable if you have something like an Apothesis. Very much takeable if you have um, Armaments on Ironclad. On like runic or something. Uh, very much takeable if you have frozen e uh, fro like the, uh, the eggs that upgrade cards by default. Very much takeable. Like it's it's it, it, but it's some but a lot of the time it's not takeable at all. For the, for most runs it's a very detrimental card because what else are you gonna do at bonfires? If you have like Guria, if you have this thing, then you have something else to do at bonfires. If you have um, Dreamcatcher, if you have uh, shovel, if you have like some other things to do at the bonfire, and maybe you can take it, maybe. Um, but uh, yeah, I would say it's like it's like the high B because when it's good, it's very good. It's just free energy. But yeah, yeah. Gambling ship is S, like high S. It's like up here with the, with the bag. It's there. It's one of the best relics in the game. Uh, gambling ship means that whenever you you're at the start of each combat, you can see your starting hand. You can discard as many cards as you want and draw that amount of cards again. It's very much free deck cycle. Um, if you draw something in the beginning of the game that you that you don't want to draw, discard it and draw something else. Uh, it's insanely powerful especially com these two combined can let you like cycle your entire deck on turn one uh it's just really sick that's it another there's always use for this relic yeah literally every, every always this is a good relic there's no case where this is not good so uh, s high high s i would say it's beyond this it's because this is always good this is not always good these are actually always good and what they do is extremely good yeah i'll, I'll i would actually put bag of prep over over this this is just these are just so goddamn good i love them um, is this frail? Is this weakened? Frail? The ginger. Is this weakened? You can no longer become weakened. I play defect. I don't really care. It's a debuff that's like nice to avoid, I guess. But like whenever I get this, I don't really care. I just don't really care. I, I mostly kill with skills. I would say the one that avoids vulnerable and the one that avoids frail is better. This is the worst one. It can go into like C. Here. Crackdown is definitely D, yeah. It's like here. Guria, I think, it's is Ironclad specific, no? No, it's a rare relic, but you, you can get it on other characters, right? It's global, I think it's global, yeah. All characters, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, definitely. It allows you to lift at bonfires, at rest sites, so you get permanent strength. Every time you lift, you get permanent one strength. Up to three. So this, if you if you rest, if you lift three times, you have permanent three more strength. Depending on who you're playing, it can be very good. Defect, it is terrible. I would say it's, it's not good on defect at all. Doesn't really benefit much from it, but on Ironclad it's really good. On uh, on on Silent it's really good. On Watcher it's really good. Uh, it's just defect doesn't care much for it, but it's like, it, it, yeah. On Watcher it's like mega cracked, yeah. Um, I would put it like A, like, like here. Everyone except defect is good, yeah. But I just don't care much for it. I have no idea what this does. Is it something to do with Scry? G it's something on G. It's something on G, but I have no idea what the fuck it is. Whenever you Scry, Scry to more, okay, I don't care. I'm gonna put it low F. Fuck it. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Golden Eye, okay, yeah, no, fuck, I don't, I don't give a shit. Scry is a mechanic I don't care for. Guria is a dead relic so often though, and it's rare. No, because I always lift. Whenever I can lift, I will lift. Um, yeah, fuck it. Golden Idol. It can become the Bloody Idol. It is g always gained in Act 1. It's meaning it, you will have much benefit from it. You get 25% more gold for every encounter you clear. So if you get 10 gold, you get 12 gold. You get 100 gold, you get 125 gold. Okay, it's that simple. Anyways, uh, yeah, it's good. It's good. I would say it's A. It's just more money. I like money. Money is good. Money good. Limit Hornet S. Whenever you kill an enemy, gain one energy and draw a card. This means that you don't have to care about AoE. A lot of the time you don't have to care about having AoE. Because you can just focus one enemy and when that enemy is dead, you gain energy and draw a card. So you can just nuke them down one by one and just like... Chill. Um, or rather, you, you you don't have to care as much about AoE, right? You just don't, you don't have to care as much about it. It's definitely still one song, but yeah, it's just it's just, it's a very it's a very good relic. It's a very good relic. When it's good, it's very good. Uh, drill. I have never bought my entire life. I don't even know what this fucking thing does. I'm gonna put it F. When you break shield, apply vulnerable. Yeah, it sucks. And this is like B. B. You have. To, yeah, it's like a B. It's like B. every three turns game one. Right? Actually, is it higher? 
Is this higher? It's just free energy, no? You Every three turns, you gain one energy. It's pretty good. I'd put it, like, up here. Yeah, fuck it. This flower is, is fucking good, man. Um, This is an upgrade to the starting relic. This is the upgrade, right? This is the normal. This is the upgrade, yeah. This gives you three miracles at the start of your turn? Two miracles? Normally, this you start with one miracle. Here you start with two or three. Three miracles. So at the start of each combat, you get three miracles. Um, which is like three energy, basically. Which is pretty good. It's a pretty fucking good relic. I'll give it like S. Or like high A, high A, high A. It's just a, a three a three miracles with no downside. It's great. Uh, it's really... It, I mean, if you have a big... If you have a huge draw on your starting hand. Uh, or like a runic pyramid. Maybe you don't want to waste it on miracles in your hand. Straight up upgrade, upgrade three pocket energy. Yeah, it's, it's pretty fucking good. There are some cases where you don't want it though. And you would rather have something else. Anyways, boat relic. I'm gonna put it in the middle of the boat relics. There. Like that. They're all the same thing. They are all good. I, I like I like having all of them. Turn two, gain 14 block for free. It's good. It's, it's just good. It's a boat relic. It's S here. By default. Um, kite. A uh, silent relic. Specific silent boss relic even um, Whenever you discard a card the first time you discard a card every turn gain one energy It's good. She tends to discard a lot of things It can turn zero cost discard cards into energy uh, Generators It's very nice. I think it's like low a I generally take this because there's no downside It's just like you get energy when you discard. Oh, it's pretty good or maybe yeah yeah, generally you have at least one discard. Like, no matter what deck you're running on, no matter what you're running on, on, on her, you want a gamble, you probably have a, you have survivor. You have so many ways to discard, that is just... Yeah. Isn't it plus one energy and one force discard? I don't recall. It's been changed. That's what it probably used to be, but now it's when you get energy whenever you do discard. Ice Cream is one of the most funny relics in the game. S. High S, because of how breakable it is. You get this especially on Defect. Defect, you can generate plasma orbs and save up energy for turns. And who can dual cast those? And who can double energy? And who can tempest? Yeah, I would give it S tier. Oh yes. Ice cream is like one of the most fun relics in the game. It's super good. A turbo becomes super good. Aggregate becomes super good. It's just fantastic. Oh, whatever. Well, of course. What energy? What? What energy? What ice cream does? You don't. You you can save energy between turns. If you end the turn with one energy, you keep that energy your next turn. If you end your turn with three energy, next turn you have six energy. Double your energy from ten to twenty. Next turn, you have 20 energy. I have ended up with 100 energy. I used that 100 energy to cast Tempest, which j j channels one lightning for each energy. I channeled 100 lightning. I then proceeded to cast Thunderstrike, which deals 9 damage to a random enemy for each channeled lightning that combat. The heart didn't like it, but I had fun. It can be fun to use. Yeah, I like it. Incense Burner. Every th 6 turns, you gain Intangible, meaning the most... When you have intangible, enemies cannot do more than one damage to you. It's a rare relic, and it's, the, it's it's a rare relic for a reason. If you have apparition, you can like stack intangible and just get more of it. Like, it's it's very good. Intangible makes you immune to instant death effects. Pretty good. That's it. Can you can it make you immune to blasphemy death? That would be funny if it did. But it's it's even then it's like it's just this is just a nice bailout a lot of the time. Ink Bottle, whenever you play 9 cards, 10 cards, draw 1 card. It's free card draw. It's like somewhere in- I think it's like A. I would say it's A tier. It's not like S tier, but it's definitely A. You, you, you like to see it. But it's not always going to be the best. It's just faster recycle. Inserter, S. Again, the relics for this dude. It's just too good. The defect is in a weird spot where like scaling is determined by a couple of check marks a lot of the time. You need to have orb slots, you need to have focus, and you need to have orb gen. This solves one of those three. And it can be a solution for late game. It can turn uh, reprog- no, not reprogram, but um, consume into a fantastic card. Like it's just whatever. Oh, again, what this this insert does is every two turns you gain one orb slot. You, you just get an orb slot for free like that. It's kind of insane. Um, and in the end, you, uh, like at the end of the combat, you're gonna have like max orb slots, and you can consume them for free energy. Like it's just it, it's just stupid good. Um, if you have the orb gen, like if you go into Act Two, you pick this, 
and you get you have you have a glacier let's say you have um, a rainbow you have uh, some stuff like that then this is like the, the insane relic it's just it's just crazy um juicer bracelet makes it so that whenever you enter a, qu a question mark on the map it cannot be a regular encounter it cannot be enemies like uh the yeah, normal link enemy encounter a hallway um it's pretty good it's like see it's a uh, it could have just not been that anyways so it's just it's just and, and at the end of the day a combat is not the end of the world sometimes you go to a question mark and you want to combat so like it's it's okay it's like a c i would say it's a c it really depends kunai it's okay it's not okay it's good but it really depends can you play three attacks do you often play three attacks if you do play three attacks it's super good if you don't tend to play three attacks every turn it doesn't do anything if you're playing uh, a shiv build on uh, on on uh, silent or if you're playing, um, actually, on the what's this? What's this fucking face? Hermit. Hermit can definitely do that. Eh, it's nice. It's free. It's free decks. Dex is very good. Anime is hard. Hello. Good morning. No, it's it's okay. It's it's. I used to overvalue this relic. Nowadays, it's like well, it can be a scaling solution for sure. Um, to just like may, be able to like keep up with bosses that do a lot of damage if your DPS is not in in like good enough yet, or just like it's just it's Dex is good. Dex is good. But you're, you're just not always going to find yourself playing those three attacks every turn. Um, but sometimes you're going to play, you're, you're going to be able to like rack up three decks a turn. Um, but it's just, free, it's just three decks. It's definitely better than Smooth Stone. I would say it's like high A. Like it's up here somewhere. Definitely up there. Lantern. The start of every combat. So here's the thing. T set. Two at the start of combats after bonfires eh, it's like sometimes it play goes into play eh, you know one energy at the start of every combat now we're in s tier territory now we're in s tier territory it synergizes with bag of prep it synergizes with the gambling ship it synergizes with ice cream it's it's every combat for the rest of your life it lets you set up things for turn one if you have a bottle power turn one it's good if you have bottle skill turn one it you can just play that shit like play it okay it's good it's fantastic it's good it's free energy. Lee's Waffle. Only shop relic. You can only buy it in the shop. When you get this thing, you paid money for it. It heals you to full, and you get 7 max health. 7 max health on its own is pretty good. Certain relics, that's all they do. Strawberry? Where's the strawberry? It's gonna be like, yeah, here. 6 max health. Kind of cringe. 7 max health and a full heal? Waffle. Waffle. I would say it's like, it's like low A. It's like low A. It's it it it's a run saver. I, I have I've had like a scenario where I was like, you know what? I could save skin right now and lose like and, and gain like 50 health back, but I'm going to just not do it. Because I have some some I have a spine. One floor later. Question mark. Event. It's a shop. The shop has the fucking waffle. I had coffee dripper. I couldn't heal it back. I had coffee dripper without any healing relics. I find a fucking waffle in the shop. Never punished. Not once in my entire life. I don't get punished. Picket waffle. We're back. We're back on our feet. The run is saved. We keep playing. The waffle is nice. When it's nice, it's super fucking nice. Letter opener. S tier. You play three skills. You deal five damage to all enemies. Doesn't matter if they're flying. Doesn't matter if they uh, are, are. I don't know. Have like some sort of a reduction of the damage you deal to them. It's, it does the five damage and it does it to everyone. It's good. It's S. You block three times. Play defensively. Oh shit. You just did damage to everyone without even remembering you had the relic. You 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 forget you have you have a, a letter opener until you you you're in the corner. You block three times, oh, and then you see the beautiful, the and everyone takes five damage. It's great. The opener has carried some of the most dog shit runs I've ever had seen in my entire life. Yeah, no, it's just fantastic. You play like if you play uh, defect, it's good. It's good because defect can play a lot of skills. Uh, Silent can play a lot of skills. On those two characters, Letter Opener is sick. But, I mean, everyone does have skills to play. So it's like, it's, it's just good. It's just good. Lizard Tail is an extra life S tier. It's kind of boring though, but it says. When, whenever you die, you you you, rest, you don't die. And you get 50% of your health back. Like, it's... You can't really say no to it. It's just, it's an extra life. You know, I guess. I don't get excited. I don't I don't get excited to see it. I'm gonna put it to like A tier. I'm gonna put it A. Yeah. It doesn't make you stronger. It just makes you able to greed a little bit more. That's it. Flower. Lotus. Maggot Lotus. It Healing in combat is doubled. Right? You double healing in combat? 25% more? 50% more? 
50% more in combat? It's only for iron clad. I never buy this shit. Go away, F. Fuck off. It makes your blood do, do more. It makes your reaper heal more. It makes like your you heal more, but like it, you, you don't always have a healing deck. You don't always have powers or like attacks to heal with. You don't always like it's, 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 yeah, just fucking go go away. I don't like it. I never buy it. And it's it's I'm pretty sure is this shop only? I th I've only seen it in shops, but I could be wrong. I think it's I think it's shop relic. Shop an expensive one. Yeah, I would I wouldn't buy it. Like you have to pay money for it too. I would. It looks also as color of F tier, so it kind of belongs there, anyways. Yeah, mango, the goat, the goat, which gives you twelve health, twelve max health. That's all it does. Mango is my favorite Smash player. It's gonna get S for Smash. There you go. I'll put out of respect. I'll put him there. Uh, this thing here can work. This is a boss relic for the ironclad only. You get one more energy, and at the start of your combat, put two wounds in your drop pile. He has some synergies with status effects. He has fire breathing. He has evolve. He has. He can exhaust them for armor. He can work around them, but a lot of the time, you don't want that shit. You don't want your draw pile to be shit. To, like, because the thing about having energy is that, well, you have four energy to spend now, but you need cards to spend them on. If you draw shit like wounds, you're not going to be able to spend that extra energy. Like, there's no point. Um, it can severely fuck you over. It's really, like, if you have a lot of relics and cards that let you draw a lot of cards, you can excuse this for sure. So I would give it a C. C tier is so empty right now. I'll put it in C. Fuck it. Matryoshka means that the next two chests you open, the next two chests will have one more relic. Whereas you could have gotten an actual relic that does something. Now we have potential for later. And it could take two whole acts. You get this in act one? You get this in act one. Yeah, it's actually a C tier. In act one, you, it might take you two whole acts to get the benefit of this thing. Mobank. Also C. It's like, it's like here. It's better than ceramic fish. Uh, whenever you ascend a floor, when you, when you choose the next encounter, you get 15 gold. However, the second you spend money in a shop, it breaks and there's nothing for the rest of the run. So it's like, well, if you go to a shop and see something nice, and you've all only ascended like three floors with it and gotten like 45 gold, it's like, well, I could buy this one thing now that's a good card that's gonna be good for the rest of the run that's gonna, that's gonna scale well, but I break my mobile bank. It, it gives you money, but fucks you over if you use the money. Like, yeah, yeah. Meal ticket, I think, is a shop-only relic. You can only get this in shops. If you don't hear this music, you're not gonna find this shit. Only when you hear this music can you buy this fucking thing, okay? I I usually hoard money my entire fucking run. I wanna go to shops. Now I'm more incentivized to do that and spend money on pellets, on mummified hands, on members, okay? So we're gonna put this in like a uh, high B. It's gonna be like here. Yeah, it's, it's... Speaking of healing, Rare Relic, Meat on the Bone. Whenever you end the combat with 50% health or less, heal 12 for free. Okay? Heal 12 for free. This is, is just like the, the strongest life support possible. This life support is stronger than whatever Prince Philip has been on for the past 10 years. It's fucking unreal. You go through Act 2, you get like molest, molest. Molest, molest. You take like a million damage per combat. It doesn't matter. This thing will just heal you right back up, and you keep going, and you just greed, 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 and it you're chilling. You're actually being chilling. At after you're you're sitting there with like a ten centimeter larger anus after slavers and book of stabbing, but it's fine because you have meat on the bone. I'm definitely taking this every time I see it, unless I already have a lot of healing. Next up, we got med kit. Medkit, not to be confused with toolbox, which looks kind of similar. That whenever I see a toolbox in shops, look, oh, dude, why is medkit? No, it's fucking toolbox, okay? But medkit, let's back to the medkit. Um, it's a shop relic. You gotta pay money for it. It's not mid. It's fantastic. You know why it's fantastic? Because the best boss relic in the game is Runic Pyramid, and with Runic Pyramid, it's good to have this. I'm gonna put it in like like high B. It's gonna be like high B. Removing burns with this is very good. I think I'm gonna put it actually in A. It's an A. Yeah, it's like it's actually I'm gonna put, I'm gonna bump it a hole. I just remembered that that uh, that the burn cards exist, and because burn cards exist, this goes up to A. Watch the relic L. Uh, membership card. Let's, Let's see, see Paul, Paul Allen's, Allen's card. card. Whenever I see this relic in like it's 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 like a neuron activation. Seeing this thing, I see this thing. It's like seeing a pair of titties. It's like. I, I, it just feels good to look at it. I get kind of hard seeing this thing. This, 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 like, 
the combination of the green colors, the white shine, the nice yellow uh, like lines on it. I see this this PNG on my computer screen. I get a fucking boner. It's S. It lets me buy more things. It doubles the value of your gold for the rest of your run. It's amazing. It's incredible. I love it. Impressive. Very, very nice. nice. Mercury Hourglass. Three damage to every enemy. Every turn. A. Not S. A. It can deal a lot of damage per turn. Through whatever they got. Molten Egg is the worst egg. But at the end of the day, it's still an egg. So you got... Uh, Fro Toxic Egg is gonna be an S. Uh, frozen Egg is gonna be an A. And uh, Molten Egg is gonna be an B. Okay. It, every attack you add to your deck, it's upgraded. For free. This is for powers. This is for attacks. And Toxic Egg is for skills. If you have all three, you will always get upgraded cards. Forever. They're good. Mummified Hand. It doesn't matter if you're if you're new to the game, if you played the game for, for, uh, for a while. At the end of the day, when you find a Mummified Hand, you pre come a little bit. Whenever you play a power, a random card in your hand costs zero. Okay, that turn. If you have like three powers in your hand, you play one. You play the you, you play the one cost power, and the fucking five cost meteor strike becomes free for zero cost. You have creative AI. You, everything costs zero. It's yeah. No, it's it's good. It's good. I like it. It's fan, it's fantastic. It's a W. Uh, Mutagens. This is a a relic special event. Um, at the spar start of a turn. Every combat, the first turn every combat, you gain three strength. A three strength flex. At the end of that turn, you lose the strength. If you happen to have artifact through clockwork souvenir, for example, you keep three strength. Damn, that's good. You keep two strength. But if you take this, you are passing the option to transform two cards. So I would say it's like low, like like it's like C tier. It's like it's like here. It really depends. If you have pellets, yeah, it's great. It generally, you would rather just transform two cards. Necronomicon. When you do get it, you're very happy. But it depends on your deck. The, what this book does is that it gives you a curse that is similar to the Calling Bell curse. You cannot remove it, but you also cannot exhaust it. So that's the difference. You, you can't exhaust this, this curse, uh, for better or worse. And whenever you play a card and attack that costs two energy or more, it's played twice. And this, can, this effect can proc every turn. Once every turn. So if you have Meteor Strike, if you if there exists one Meteor Strike in your deck, you always take this. I don't care if you, it's the only two or more attack in your your hand. You have Meteor Strike, you take it. It's good. But yeah, it's it's situational. You don't always want to curse. You don't always have cards that cost two or more. Um, but when you do, it's incredibly good. And just because of that, it's going to be top A. This thing here, Niaos Lament. It's a thing you can only get at the beginning of the game. Making your first three encounters have one health. It lets you snipe elites. If you make it to an elite before having three encounters, the elite has one health. This thing enables this thing. Like generally, you you probably win more runs taking this than you do taking the other rewards because it's it's just a stable, consistent thing that lets you run get off, take off. It lets you run just like take off in the beginning. And, and sometimes that's all you need. Um, I will give it like a... It's gonna be another... It's a lot of A tiers here, man. It's gonna be an A tier. Powerful. Nilus Codex X. Half the time, you do the fucking event for these books. 80% of the time, it's fucking Nilus Codex. I forgot what it even does. I just remember it sucks. It has one to three cards into your draw pile. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Into, into your draw pile. If it added it to your hand, I would get it. But if it's in your draw pile, you have to, like, draw it also. Like, eh, it's not good. This is a silent-only relic, which gives you three shivs at the start of each combat. You don't always want three shivs. You got Timekeeper, you don't want three shivs. If you get it super early, like Act 1 or Act 2, if you are playing sp silent and you have the starting relic and you also have Bag of Prep, then the shivs get added to your discard pile instead. You probably don't want that, because the Silent can very much start with 10 cards without, like, this relic. Uh, but I, I'll give it, like, a C. I'll put it, like, here. Yeah, it's, it's okay. It's not bad, but it's, like, it's okay. This is a relic that you can only get, like, in Act 2, and you need to trade the relic for it. And it only improves your chances of seeing a rare card. I'll put it, like, here. I never do it. I never want to give up my fucking relics. It's not gonna happen. I keep my relics. Nuclear battery. Defect only re boss relic. 
Instead of starting... No. At the start of each combat, channel, channel one plasma. So at, in turn one, this is an energy relic. Maybe turn two is an energy relic. If you are not doing an orb build, it's a fantastic relic because you're not going to cycle it away and it's just going to be a, a, literally just one energy. If you're doing an orb run, you can uh, dual cast it. If you, if you, for example, have a ice cream, this is a very good relic. Typically, I take this because it's just turn one, more energy. And you can you can dual cast it later or evoke it later to get more energy on a specific turn. But just having turn uh, having more energy early is very nice. This is literally the boss relic you want. Because at that point, it's just free energy. Um, I would give it like a... It's kind of situational, but generally I would say it's good. It's like one of the... Well, it's like nice. It's nice, but it's not that. It's not like all... It's, eh. as, a, as a early game boss swap, it's not that. It's kind of good. Actually, no, it's actually good. It's, it's actually pretty good as a starter relic. You can play more cards. Uh, Nunchaku, every time you play 10 attacks, gain 1 energy. It's okay. It's like me. Smooth Stone? I think it's called Smooth Stone. Smooth Rock. Smooth Stone. Permanently gain 1 dex. 1 sex. It's like, it's like, it's like here as well. This is, this is, it's just, it's, it's, it's just, you just get one dex. It's nice. It's good. It's going to save you a lot of health to us run, but it's not like going to be like, it's not huge. It's not, it's not like gigantic. It's, it's okay. Um, this is a relic you only get through an encounter. If you can do the encounter, always do it. It's literally a free relic. I think it's A. Being vulnerable is something that's going to happen to you a lot throughout your run. Making vulnerable only be half as bad is pretty fucking good. 100% always take this when I can. Um, old coin is a rare relic that gives you 300 coins. I like it. S. S. If you have membership card, you get 600 gold. If you have membership card and, and a courier, you get 600 gold and 20% more. But it's very good it's very good you, you don't get 600 gold but your 300 is worth 600 basically because it's there it's worth double omori d tier a lot of the time when you get the omori it does literally nothing but this relic negates your two next curses that you obtain the two next curses you add to your deck they don't get added it's like a buffer you get a buffer for curses so like if you are about to get something like this if you're about to get a ding ding then yeah, it's super good, but you don't know that. It's like ahead of- it's like you have to- you, yeah. Omori is a non-relic, I made it up, I never got value out of it, and when I do, I forgot I had it. Yeah, like, it can- it can prevent you from getting the- the parasite from the... Worthing Mass in Act 3, but... That's only happened once to me. And that was today. Pellets. Whenever you play a power, skill, and attack in the same turn, you remove all of your negative effects. This- this relic is a shop-only relic, but it's a relic that just makes... Bias recognition. It's a relic that just makes fasting. It's it can make you able to play reprogram in a non-reprogram build if you want to. It makes it so that when you're fighting the heart, you don't be get frail, weakened, and vulnerable for like three two turns. Okay? You, you you avoid that. It's insane. It's insane. Being weakened, frail, and vulnerable is terrible. This can remove all of that. It can also remove self-imposed debuffs. Like, it's just good. This is really good. Ori Chalcum is a relic that you forget you have most of the time. But sometimes, early game with Frost on defect, it can be very potent. It can make you play three attacks. You have two Frost Orbs. And then you have eight block. No, you have ten block for nothing. It can be nice. But what Ori Chalcum does is that whenever you end turn with no block, gain six block. Right? So you're better off playing three attacks than two attacks and one block. And if you have Frost Orbs on top of that, then you can get like, if you have 3 Frost Orbs and no focus, you end your turn, you get 12 block. 12 block is the minimum you can get then. It's pretty good. But for the most part, you're gonna, you're gonna, later in the game, you're gonna get better block cards, and you're probably not gonna want to end your turn with, with no block, so... Uh, it saves you on the Automatons Elite on Act 1. It, it, it does, it does, that's true. Ornamental Fan. Oriental Fan? Whenever you play 3 attacks, gain 4 block, I believe. I'll give it like a C... Like C, mid C. Um, Orrery is a shop only relic that gives you five card rewards. It's good, but if you get it, if you get like, if you have, if you get like the, let's say you pick 100 gold as your option uh, on the start, you do an encounter and you go into a shop and that shop is Orrery, generally you just buy the fucking thing because uh, then you get five card rewards immediately, which is super strong for getting you online. Um, but I would give it like a B. If you get it any later, or if you're looking for specific cards, it can be very good, but, uh, Pandora's Box is a boss relic that transforms every strike and defend in your deck. If you have, like, the basic, the, your basic start, it transforms all of them. 
It's hilarious to get this act one as you swap. Um, high A or low S? I'll give it low S. It's very good. Funny if you have also yeah. Additionally, if you have any eggs, frozen egg, where is it? Frozen egg, molten egg, or toxic egg, whatever gets transformed into, is upgraded. You know, if you have toxic egg and you see a Pandora's box, box, and you have strikes in the fence, take it. Usually, it's very good. Pantograph, I believe, is the name for this one. Rare relic, I think. Uh, whenever you enter a boss fight, heal twenty five. Is it 20, 25? It's a, it's a big ass heal. I'll, I, I, I think I like a high, high A. 25. Yeah. On Ascension 20, you have two bosses at the end of Act 3. You heal 25 for each. So you get 50 health extra at the end of Act 3. Uh, and 25 heal for bosses is just like, well, now you can just, instead of healing it before the boss fight, you now just upgrade. So it, it, it just enables you to upgrade more cards, which is pretty neat. Uh, I like it a lot. But uh, so definitely Ascension 20, this thing is really, really powerful. Going into heart, it's nice to have 25 more health, you know. Paper Crane is a relic only for silent, I believe. Which makes it so that you, when you weaken someone, they become more weak and... They, they deal 75% less damage instead of 50% less? Or 50% less instead of 25% less? What did Crane do again? 25 to 40, yeah, so they do 40% less. Yeah, okay. Instead of 25% less damage on the weekend, you deal 40% less. It's big. It's it's very big. It's gonna be like a high A. Paper Frog! Uh, vulnerable. And on Ironclad only. One, yeah, it's, it's, the, 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 the crane is silent only. The frog is Ironclad only. Whenever someone's vulnerable, uh, they take 75% extra damage instead of 50. This is 75, right? Uh, but I have never played with this. I don't play Ironclad. I can only imagine this being like at least A. Both of these has to be A. Both of these sounds very good, because the debuffs are very common to find in decks for these characters. And they can exploit them a lot. Peace Pipe, whenever you enter a rest site, instead of upgrading a card or resting for health, you can instead choose to toke. You can, it says, you can ins instead decide to just get fucking lit up. Light it up, smoke, pass the pipe, and remove a card instead. I'm gonna be honest, for me, this is a cosmetic relic. For me, this thing is cosmetic, 99% of the time. It's just cosmetic. I never use it. Instead, I would, I would, like, most of the time, I just upgrade instead. I upgrade, or I lift, or I recall, or, like, there's only so many rests to go around. You don't really have, usually, the times to, to remove. Peer is... 8 max health? 10? Where the mango is there, then the peer can be, like, in low A. This is low S, this is low A, and then we can have strawberry in, like, low uh, F. <laughs> um... Penib, 10 max. Okay, 10 max is pretty good. Anyways, Penib, every 10th attack deals double damage. A. Not as good as Necronomicon though, but like, I guess like some somewhere somewhere in A. It's just double damage sometimes. It's it can add, it can become a lot of fucking damage if you use it. If you set it up correctly, on the correct turn, with vulnerable and like a strong attack card, double damage. It's pretty good. And then we have this motherfucker, Philosopher's Stone. Do not take this into Act 2. Bad idea. You gain one energy forever. Enemies gain one strength forever. Act 2 has a lot of multi-enemy encounters. Act 2 has a lot of multi-hit encounters. Act 2 has a lot of multi-enemy encounters with multi-hit at the same time. Each of those benefit greatly from strength. Don't give them that strength in Act 2. Um, and even the heart also benefits from it. Like, it's just, it's just... If you're gonna pick this up, you gotta know what you're doing. Uh, I definitely would give it as like a... Along with the fusion hammer, these are like just as pickable. Sometimes this is exactly what you need, but sometimes this is like it just kills you. Absolutely just kills you. Pocket watch. Rare relic. Whenever you play three cards or less, next turn draw three more cards. It it has the same color scheme as the mushroom. I'll give I'll put it next to it in A tier. It uh, it it is really good deck cycle. If you have some good st strong cards in your deck, you can cycle the deck faster and play them more. Um. Early in the game it can be very nice, but early in the game it's nice, but you don't have enough good cards to justify it. Later in the game it's... You generally kind of play more than three cards, but overall it's a nice option to have. It's a very nice option to always have, it's just not like immediately super strong. But yeah, no, definitely I, I get very happy to see this. Potion belt. Two more potion slots? It's good. If, you, if you're playing uh, silent, a bit, more, uh, a bit more desirable since you can get alchemize. If you have Potion Bark, obviously it's an easy choice. If you have White, if you have white Beast statue, yeah, of course it's gonna be great. 
Um, but it kind of depends on what what other potion synergies you have, or how much spare money you have, or how much left of the game you have. But generally, a good relic. Uh, you have to pay money for it though, because it's, it's it's only shop. I give it like a low A. Prayer wheel. If you get this thing early, you are extremely lucky. A rare relic. Every normal combat drops two card rewards instead of one. Amazing. Amazinga. Even later in the game you want this. Sometimes all you need is that one extra hologram. Sometimes all, all you need is that to find that glacier, to find that consume in your deck. Uh, prayer wheel is always good. Preserved insect. Every elite has 25% less health. Elites die faster. Great. S tier. Content shard. Uh, S tier. S tier. If you're playing Defect, this could get you a barricade. If you're not playing Defect, this could you get you reprogram. S tier. That's it. It it it, it uh, card rewards now have have cards from any character, so you can get Defect cards on Ironclad. You can get Ironclad cards on Defect. You can get Watcher card on like they all. It becomes chaos. It's t typically not good. It's too Yulu, but it's it's funny. It's content. It's content. Um, starting relic for the Watcher. Start with a miracle in your hand. A miracle is a card that gives one energy that is retained and also is exhaust. So at, at one of your turns, you can gain one energy. It's like A. It's A. It's a lantern. It's basically a lantern, but you can choose when to use the energy. I just like the lantern more. Because you, this is a starting relic. I just don't... I, when, you, when you get something at the start of your run all the time, you don't appreciate it. So fuck this thing. Lantern is where it's at. Anyways, question card. Card rewards now has one more option. So instead of three cards to choose, you get four. Um, pretty good. Depends on when you depends on when you get it. You get it early, it's very good. I get it like low A. I, I generally don't care about this thing. I, I get four rewards and they're all trash anyways. Like, I just don't care about it. I, it's like, I know it's good. I know it's like, yeah, it's very good. I just don't care. S plus if your streamer gives free content. True. Mask. You get this relic for free by just killing a bunch of losers. It makes every enemy weak at the start of their turn. It strips artifact and it makes your opening hand a bit easier to play because you're going to take less damage if it doesn't strip artifact. It's good. It also makes it so like, it also prevents you from losing all your money. Where's Marbles? Marbles was S tier, no? Mar marbles was A? It's lower than Marbles. It's still an A, but it's lower than Marbles. I prefer Vulnerable over Weak, so it's gonna be like that here. Uh, I believe this is this is a common or uncommon relic for Ironclad. When you're under 50% health, you get 3 strength. He benefits a lot from strength. It's pretty good to have it. He also fucks around a lot with his, with his like health pool. I'll give it like low A. 3 strength with a condition. Low A, maybe like B. Put it like there. It really depends, but yeah. Regal pillow F tier. Fuck this pillow. Whenever you heal, heal 15 more. I don't heal. These things can go fuck themselves. The boss swap for silent. Every turn, draw an... This is machine learning. Right? You just draw an extra card every turn. You draw six cards every turn. That's like up here. Instead of prep, yeah. Instead of prep. On its own? No, it's a, it's a boss swap though. You do have to give up... You do have to give up this relic to get it. On its own, this is an S tier relic. This is like super S. But because you have to give up this thing here for this thing, um, I would give it like an A, like high A. Maybe like low S. But it's definitely here somewhere because you draw an extra card per turn. It's really fucking good. Uh, this thing also, I would say, is like, this is a starting relic. It's for sure, sure better than this. It's bag of prep, but you always start with it. I'm going to give it here. Th these two do the same thing. They do the same thing. But like you, you start with this. You always have it. Like it's a little dumb. They do the exact same thing. But like this, I tend to value this a bit more because you kind of, you know. Honestly, this is like S tier too. I would say this is better. So you you draw one more card turn one, turn two, you are at the same point if you had this. Turn three, now you're in the plus one draw. Since you draw one more per turn instead of drawing two more turn one. You draw one more every turn. It's definitely better. It's a very good upgrade. But, yeah. Black is global. That's why it's more valuable. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, they do this. If you value them by what they, they do, then they're the same. They're the same thing. But the snake here, by, by what it does, it's just like a fantastic fucking card. Runic Pastor. Here's a, here's a also ST relic. Well, the start of your combat. It's a, it's a defect relic. At every combat, in the beginning, you gain three orb slots. Orb slots are fantastic. This might be all the orb slots you need for the rest of the game. It's insane. It's super strong. Runic cube, whenever you take one damage, draw one card. 
Ironclad specific boss relic. I don't know where to put this. I never reuse. I never pick it. It can be broken. I can see how it's broken, but I'll give. I'll give it a D. I'll give. I'll put it like here. Dome D for dome. D for dome because it's 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 uh, you you can no longer see enemies in tents. You can no longer see how much damage they're gonna do if they're gonna attack, if they're gonna buff, or if they're gonna debuff. But you get one more energy. For streaming, it's terrible because you guys can't see. If you are not familiar with uh, Slade Spire, the game becomes even more confusing if you have this thing here. It sucks. However, you have the runic cube, you have the runic dome. Now we have the runic pyramid. Absolute top of fucking S tier. This card, this relic, is a boss relic that lets you. It, that, that makes it so that you do not discard your hand at the end of your turn. You keep all the cards until you play them. This makes it so that you can very easily get a full hand and you don't have enough energy to play them. So you gotta be careful when you pick this relic. But if you're doing a dark orb build for, for defect, if you're doing a a like a build any any build on the hermit, if like it's just such a fucking good it's S. It's like this has won me so many so many runs. Like half my defect wins that I win on on uh, on on the heart on A20 is because of this. Because of this relic is so good, super good. Potion bark is a boring boss relic. F. It doubles the effect of potions. That's all it does. It's a boss relic. Like it's fuck off. Um. I don't. I don't care for it. I don't care for it. I really don't. Self forming clay. Whenever you take damage on the, your turn, gain three block for every instant next turn. It's an ironclad only relic, and I believe it's rare. I don't think it's a sharp relic, but it's definitely rare. Uh, it's gonna be like up here. It's gonna be up here. Shovel. This relic has fucking killed me so many times, dude. It doesn't do anything. You get this thing, it doesn't do anything. It only does something if you sacrifice something. And you don't know what you're gonna get. Shovel is A1 content relic. Yeah, it's not... It's F. Because it prevents you from upgrading cards, it prevents you from resting, it prevents you from from re recalling, and you don't know what you're gonna get. You can get, you can use this, the the shovel, and uh, you get the fucking uh, the darkstone parry. You use this, you don't get an upgrade or a rest, and you get the fucking candle. Use this, you get the bottle flame. You use this, you get the, the boot. Like it's just, eh. I don't want it. Sure you can. Whenever you play three attacks in one turn, gain one strength. I would say it's equally powerful to the kunai. It really depends on what you're doing with the build. Singing Bowl. I forgot the rarity. Whenever you have a card reward, instead of cl clicking a card, and, and cl instead of skipping, you can get two max health here. I like skipping cards. I like having a thin deck. If you combine this with Prayer Wheel, that gives you two card rewards for each combat, uh, it is six, no, four max HP per combat. That's a lot of max HP. It's gonna add up. Uh, it's, this is good. If you get it early. If you get it early, it's good. If you get it late, it does nothing. So it's it's, it's, it's like... I guess I'll put it like midday. Because you you can't control when you get it. Same with egg. If you get it late, it doesn't do much. If you get it early, then... Max HP also heals. It also does heal, yeah. So you can get like... You get 2 HP per fight. It's like the, the blood vial. But instead of getting heal, you get max HP heal. Which is much better. Anyways. Slaver's Color. The most pussy fucking relic you could possibly take it and uh, uh, you just kill the boss and you just fucking pussy out. You take the leash on yourself, you lay down and you, you, you it's, it's, it's boring. It's good. It, it gives you the energy when it counts, but it's, good lord, this is fucking boring. Good lord, this is boring. It's like, it's so good though. It's so good, but it's so boring. I'll give it like an A. Like somewhere completely forgettable in A tier. Some are forg forgettable in A tier. I don't care, man. B for boring? Yeah, B for boring. There you go. B for boring. Fuck that thing. It's so boring. Slaver Color is the- I literally had no other option to pick Relic. Yeah, that's what it is. It is it's just like I have nothing else to do. I don't think it is to pick. So I guess at least- I guess, I guess I'll get this. Um, I forgot the name of this Relic. It gives you three- two strength or three strength for every- whenever you- no. Only in elite encounters, you get two strength. Slingshot, yeah. Is it, is it bosses too? Or is it only elites? I think it's bosses too. No, it's only elites? Only elites, damn. Okay. B, C. Let's give C. Two strength, yeah. And, you, and there's also a shop relic, I think. You have to buy the thing. You have to pay money for it. Mask. Shop, no. Card removals in shop always cost 50 with this. B. It doesn't do anything. 
it doesn't do anything. But it, only when you go to the shop, then it does something. It lets you pay less money for the for the removal. I think courier, this thing here, and the membership card are way better. Because when they are good, they're insane. When this is good, it's like, oh, okay, that's nice. It saves you money long term, but uh, it's it's it doesn't have it has very little impact here and now. Sneko. Whenever you apply poison, apply one more. S for Sneko. Okay. As for Sneko. It's, so, it's good with a lot of the poison cards. It's, like, it's Or two of them, specifically. It's good with uh, with Bouncing Flasks. It's because it's, it bounces. It, it does it four times. Four? Three times? Four times? But every time, every instance is one more a poison. And it adds, it definitely does add up. With uh, Envenom, if you use a... a uh, it, and then it becomes twice as good. Upgraded four. Yeah, so four instances. This will make it sure that it's four more poison. Which is a lot more poison. Uh, and Venom makes it so that you apply two poison instead of one when you attack. Like, it's, it's not always very good. It's, I wouldn't say it's actually S. Because you don't always have a poison build. But when you do, it's not always super high. But I like, realistically it would be like here. But I'll put it here because, uh, whatever. Snekowai. Snekowai. If you have Meteor Strike in your deck, it's S tier. I'll put it- I'll, I'll put the I on the skull there. S. It's funny. It's content. It's content. It's gambling. At the start of your turn, draw three- two more cards, and randomize the cost of every card from one to three. Uh, Sosu. Something that I often pick on lower ascensions, but on A20 I generally not don't pick it, because potions are, like, necessary. Uh, it really depends. If you have a fairy in the bottle or like some potions that you can that you can just keep long term, it's definitely takeable in the end in, in the back two. But I'll put it like in B tier. Like high B tier. This I forgot the name of. It starts with S. Uh, but whenever you enter a question mark room, you get 50 gold. That is a lot of fucking money, S tier. I'll put it there. I like this thing. Serpent head. Serpent head. It's very good. It's free money. Combined with my favorite relics, it's very good. Yeah, events, go to an event, you get money. Just like that. My, my spoon. spoon. Whenever you play a card that has exhaust, 50% chance that it doesn't exhaust. Spoon is S tier. S for spoon. Yeah, it's good. If you have a, if you have a genetic algorithm, if you have uh, some really good cards that, that exhaust, it's fantastic. Sometimes it can fuck you. If you want to exhaust like a slime, then sometimes the slime doesn't exhaust. It can be bad, but for the most part, it's like, you just gotta think. You just gotta fucking think, man. When do you take it? When you're not. Strike dummy. Cards with strike deal three more damage. Cards attack cards with name strike and then deal three more damage. I think it's called. I'll give it like a D. I'll give it a D. I, like, I think it's nice. It gets an act one. It's nice. I think it's nice. I think it's okay. I'm not gonna give it an F. I think it's okay. Uh, strawberry can go also like F. I don't care. You, you finished killing a fucking elite. You finished getting railed by a knob. And like, oh, I finally did it. I can't wait to see what my relic could possibly be. You get a fucking strawberry. <laughs> Abandon run. Um, it gives you six max health for like seven. It's like dog shit. Sundial. Whenever you, every third time you shuffle your draw, discard pile into your draw pile, gain two energy. So when you cycle your deck three times, get two energy. S. Absolute S. Because I'm a slut for card draw and card and deck cycle. It's S. Symbiotic Virus S tier. Another S tier defect relic. Start each combat with one dark, uh, like, channeled. You start with the dark. Same as Cracked Core, but it, instead of a lightning, it's dark. Dark needs time to build up and becomes, become good damage. So having it immediately evoked without even doing anything, turn one, very good. It's gonna end up in doing a lot, lot of damage. It's very nice. I don't know what this is. It looks like a... I don't know. Dildo. Uh, Abacus. Whenever you shuffle your uh, draw pile into your discard pile, discard pile into your draw pile, gain th six block, I think? It's 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 good, but it's, there's a big but there. Can you do it often? Yes. Can you not do it often? It's bad. Um, it's a shopper relic too, so you have to pay money for it. But uh, if you have like some sort of infinite small tiny deck on Ironclad or something, it can, it can result in a lot of fucking block, which is good, but it really depends. Courier. S tier. A lot of the time, this does fucking nothing. A lot of the time, this this relic does fuck all, except give you a 20% discount. But when it's good, dude, when you have the membership card, the courier, the old coin, and two normalities from the event in from Mindbloom, you are 
literally, like fucking uh, Kanye West going on a shopping spree at the at Act Four. You're in hell, just buying everything. You're buying everything the shop has to offer, all of it. You have all the money. You're Jeff Jeff Bezos. Super good. Spend every dime you have. I don't know what the name of this is. Uh. When an enemy dies to poison, transfer that poison to another enemy. That's what it does. It transfers poison. Uh, see. It's... What if there's only one enemy? It's like super situational. Absolutely not. A DD actually. That's dog shit. Head in a jar. Yeah, no, fuck it. Shred needle. Start each combat with four plated armor. It's like A. Rare relic though. But if you get this act one, you're gonna be... A, it's gonna be very nice. Tingsha. S. S. Whenever you discard a card, you can discard a lot of cards. Deal X amount of damage to all enemies or random enemy? I, f I forgot. Three damage to all or, or random? Three to random, yeah. Okay, but you have a 10 card hand, you do you use uh, like fucking uh, uh, calculated gamble, and then you do you deal 27, da 27 damage for free, like I think she's amazing. Chest. F. It's green. Look, it has an exact color. Maybe it looks more like- No, it's more like this. F. Every fourth question mark is a relic. I would rather just have a fucking relic. Honestly, I would rather just have the fucking relic and be done with it. Because, first of all, the question mark could just be a relic to begin with. Second of all, it might take a mind gloom away from you. I would, like, some of the events are really good, I would rather just have that. House F. House is what you take if you get two boss relics that are so fucking bad that you can't deal with their deal. Like, if you if you go, go to a boss fight and you have a, a white beast statue in your, in your inventory and your option is Sosu or ectoplasm. Okay, I'll take the I take I'll take the house. If my two other options, eating a, a pile of dog shit I found in the street, or like paying money for a Nintendo product, I will get the I will get the tiny house. But for the most part, no. Uh, toolbox. Um, start. It's a shop relic. You have to pay money for it. Uh, you can dis you you get three choices of. Colorless cards that you can add to your deck. I would never pay money for it. It's like, yeah, but if, it's, like, it's like F. I would, I'd never, don't want it. Bad. Tori is S. Whenever you take five damage or less, you take one damage. It makes a lot of enemies deal one damage to you. Birds in Act Two only deal one damage. They are never going to deal more than, like, you're never going to be at the point where the birds deal five or more or like six damage per hit. In that case, you should just uninstall the game. So it, it serves against, it saves you against them, it saves you against uh, the Book of Stabbing if you are weakened, it saves you against the heart until it gets like 6 strength, it's, it's, it's good. It's super good. Tori is like one of the best relics in the game. Uh, tough bandages. Is like high A. High A. Whenever you discard a card, it's a silent only card, or a uh, relic. When you discard a card, gain 4 block. Or 3 block? 3 or 4 block. You get a lot of free block. Lower than Tingsha? Yeah, I think it's lower than Tingsha. I would rather deal damage. I would, I would rather, honestly, I would rather just damage her. I guess they're the same. They're both very good, but I think they're the same. They can be either or. But, yeah, they're, but they're definitely good. You can block instead of dealing damage. It's, it's, it's good, but like, meh. Toxic Egg, the Egg of S tier. It's like high up here. Depends on when you get it. But having skills be upgraded is generally the, 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 the best thing. Toy Ornicopter. Nut. It's free healing. Whenever you use a potion, gain 5 health. Just, you, you, were, you were gonna use the potion anyway, so you heal for free. It means so you, you can rest less and upgrade more, and lift more, and, and uh, dig more with your shovel. Okay, so this is, it's good. Free health. I like it. Tungsten Rod. One of, I think this is the first, one of the first relics I ever got in this game. My first one I got this. Whenever you take damage, take one damage less. It's a rare relic. It costs a fuck ton of money in the shop, but it's goddamn it's worth it. Fantastic, it's, it's these two combined. These two combined, can we get them like over here so we can like see them together? These two combined? If something does 5 damage to you, or less, it does 0. Because th this makes it 1, this makes it 0. Which is good. A lot of self-harm abilities in the game deal 1 damage. Now it's 0. Only if it's in the right order. Wait, does it have to be in the right order? Oh, does it have- do you have to get the, to the, the Tori first and then you gotta get the Tungsten? If you pick up Tungsten first, it makes Tori 6. Oh shit, I didn't know that. I guess both options are good then. Both of them are good. It's It sounds a bit weird to me, but I guess... It's still good, yeah. But for the hard fight, I would say that getting Tori first would be best. Uh, you can no longer become frail because of the turnip. Turnip is, is a rare relic, I believe. No longer become frail. Uh, it's like A. 
He's like along with this. Ginger is kind of mid, being weak and I don't care too much, but being frail fucking sucks. So not being able to rig a frail again, I like that. Turn up be good. A tier. Siphon, or like... Uh, I forgot the name of it. Something. Every enemy starts with like three poison or something. Funnel! Funnel! It's called Funnel. Coffee Siphon Paper. Um, yeah, every enemy starts with like three or six poison. Four poison to all enemies. There we go. It was... I didn't remember exactly how much. At worst, it gives four poison. At best, it strips some artifact. Um, it's okay. It's like, it's like B. It's okay. 10 free damage over 4 turns. Four turns. Yeah, but it's a bit late. And sitting top, if you're below a, tw a 10, it's pretty good. If you're after a 10, it's pretty shit. It's like B. It's gonna be. Turret plus load is always 5 to 0. Yeah, it doesn't. It didn't sound correct to me that it could be 6 to 1. Because I've never experienced that, and I've had it quite a few times. It sounded wrong. And I, didn't, I never thought that the order you picked up relics in would change anything, but anyway, whatever. So it needs it needs a lot of things to... That it needs a lot of stars to align to allow for that infinite break, but it can definitely happen. But for the most part, this a lot of the time, this does nothing at all. It does literally nothing for you. So I just don't like it. Varya, starch is combat with one strength. Where's the rock? Where's the stone? Stone. It's next to the rock. They're the same thing. This gives one dex. This gives one strength. It's okay. Choker is a thing that I only took one run in when I was new to the game. I hate it. You can you get one energy permanently, but you can only play six cards per turn. Six cards sounds like a lot, but trust me, you are gonna want to play more. F for Femboy. Yeah, that's right. Lotus. It's I don't know what it is. I have no clue. No clue. I really don't. Uh, War paint. I don't play. It's a watcher. It's a watcher relic. It's a watcher relic. Uh, War paint. Upgrade two random skills. B. Yeah. Trunks. Every turn, upgrade a card in your hand. S. It just upgrades the cards every turn. It's good. Upgrade two random attacks. Same thing. It's just. I would say. I would say War paint is slightly better. But it's always gonna hit your. This is gonna hit your defense. This is gonna hit your strikes, and it's gonna be the fucking nothing. And you paid like 150 for it. It's like. Okay, thanks. This always comes with gaining a pain curse, though. You, you get this, you're always gonna get the pain curse, which pain is really rough. So you have to, you're gonna have to make a choice. Can I afford to take this? Because it's a very good relic, but it comes at the price. Um, white piece statue, rare relic. At the end of every combat, you will guarantee to get a potion. Always get potion, potion. It's very good. Wing boost is a relic that I fucking hated to begin with because it's like, who cares about pathing? Well, it's kind of useless, right? No, it's good. It's because, because chat, if you get Black Star, if you're going into like Act 2 or 3 and you're super strong, Wing Boosts ca boots can be like the one thing that just lets you hit Elite, 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 Question Mark, Question Mark, Elite, 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 and you get like a million of them. Or get like three bonfires in a row to like upgrade three cards or, or talk three times or lift three times or fucking uh, dig three times with, uh, with, the, with, uh, with the shovel. You know, it's, it, it's, it, they're, they're funny. They're really good. Three times, you can not follow the pathing and just go wherever you want on the map. Three times, you can just go whatever. And it's, it's really strong. It can be really strong. Uh, wrist blades, uh, watch relic. Whenever you play a card, attack card that costs zero, it deals four more damage. Shivs now deal four more damage. It's basically a free accuracy, I guess. I'll give it like a low A. It's a low A. Watch relic, L. Astrolabe, F. It always gives him bad cards. We're done! That's the tier list. Holy shit, that was a lot more relics than I thought. I didn't think this game had so many fucking relics. That was like, hours. We can do- we can do card tier lists another day. For- for like the defect card tier list. We can do a- a, a hermit card tier list. L opinion on Astrolabe, move it up, or DMC for using the A25 mod. Frost Prime. This thing here is fucking dog shit. Okay? I will pick this thing up. I will pick this thing up and turn three strikes into three upgraded cards that are somehow fucking worse than just having the three strikes. Every fucking time. It never fails. And then I close the, then my game coincidentally just crashes. I unfortunately have to open the game again. Turns out it saved before I picked the Astrolabe. And you know what? Then I just picked a fucking Sosu or something. Something reasonable. <laughs> Something that an uh, insane person wouldn't pick. And then I, I move on with my run and I'm good. Like, <laughs> I, I hate this thing. It always scams me. Every time I get scammed. I'm, just, I'm not saying it's a good relic. 
I'm saying it's better than Astrolabe. It's I, that's it. Other than that, I think we are. I think we're done here. I think we're